Live from the Javits Center in New York City, it's theCUBE, covering Inforum 2017. Brought to you by Infor. Where am I looking? Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Inforum 2017. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Dave Vellante. We're joined by Stefan Scholl. He is the president of Infor. Thanks so much for joining my us. My pleasure. For returning See to theCUBE. My yeah. pleasure, yeah, three years in a row. I think we're four now, yeah. Indeed. Right. Indeed. Well, we skipped a year in between. That's right, three years, yeah. yeah. So anyway, it's good to be here. This has been a, a hugely successful conference. Uh, we're hearing so much about the growth and momentum of Infor. Yeah. Can you can you unpack this a little bit for our viewers yeah. here? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, people always forget we only started this aggressive cloud journey literally three years ago when we announced that uh, Infor in New Orleans that we were pivoting the company to Infor uh, industry-based cloud suites. Everybody looked at us and said, well, that's an interesting pivot, and you know, why are you doing that? Well, as I said yesterday, we, we really saw a market dynamic that you, know, you see retail just getting crushed by what Amazon was doing, and, we, and it, it was obvious today, but then it wasn't so obvious, but that was going to happen everywhere. And, and so we really got aggressive on believing we can put together a very different approach to tackling enterprise software. Everybody is so fatigued from buying from our competitors traditional perpetual software, and then you end up modifying the hell out of it, and then you end up spending a gazillion dollars, and it takes forever, and then if it does work, you're stuck on old technology already, and you never get to the next round of evolution. So we said, why don't we build cloud suites, take the last mile industry functionality that we have, put it in the cloud, make it easy for our customers to implement it, and then we'll run it for them. And then by the way, when the newest innovation comes out, we'll upgrade them automatically. Right? That's what cloud's about. So that's where we saw that transformation happening. So in three years we went from 2%, as I said, to 55 plus percent of our revenue. And by the way, we're not a small company, right? Nobody at our size and scale has ever done that in enterprise software. So, a so lot what an accomplishment. So a lot yeah. of large companies, some that you used to work for, yeah. are really slow. Yeah. And you know what? A lot of times that's okay because IT tends to be really slow. Yeah. As you move to the cloud and move to the, the situation where, okay guys, new release coming. What are your customers saying about that? How are you managing the, that sort of pace of change, that flywheel of Amazon that you're now innovating on and yeah. pushing to your client Well, they're base? excited. I mean, and, and I'll tell you, I mean, I remember standing up in, in Frankfurt in Germany 18 months ago for a keynote and said, the cloud is coming. I almost got kicked out of Germany. <laughs> I mean, they said, it's not going to happen in Germany. You know, yeah. we're engineering pedigreed, we're going to be, you know, you don't on understand the German market. <laughs> you don't understand our marketplace. <laughs> and what did what you know? And we we're really close friends with Andy Jassy at AWS, the CEO. The AWS guys are unbelievable and innovative. And we said, you know, you guys got to build your next data center in Frankfurt. So they put, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars of investment in, built a data center. What's the fastest growing data center in Europe right now for them? I got Frankfurt. Guess. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. The German market for us, our pipeline is tenfold increase from what it was a year ago. So. Really? You know, it's working in Germany, and it's happening on a global basis. We have, I think yesterday, 75 customers from Saudi, from Dubai, from all the Middle East. I mean, cloud is a great equalizer. And don't underestimate, you know, I'll take luck, you know, to our advantage anytime. The luck part is, there's fatigue out there. They're exhausted. They've spent so much money over the last 20, 30 years, and never reached the promise of what they were sold then. And so now, with all the digital disruption, and think of the business competitive challenges that they have to deal with. I mean, I don't care, you could be in Wichita, Kansas, building up an e-commerce website and compete with a company in Saudi tomorrow, right? The barriers to entry in manufacturing, retail, you know, uh, public, I mean, look at government agencies. I mean, we're doing nine-figure transformations in the cloud with public sector agencies. Again, two years ago they would have said, never going to happen. Yeah, um, the government to spend that kind of That's right. Yeah. Mike Rogers, uh, CIO, was saying, it was, look at all the technical debt that we've accumulated over the years, and it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. If we don't bite the bullet and move now, it's just going to take that much longer. That's right, that's right. And they're leapfrogging. I mean, I'm so excited. Government agencies, I mean, there's even some edicts in some places where cloud only. I mean, this, this whole Gold Coast opportunity, 40 plus different applications in Australia, mm -hmm. all going into the cloud to handle all the complexities they have around their, um, uh, the Commonwealth Games that they're trying to deal with. So, I mean, just huge transformations uh, on a global basis. At yeah. this conference we're hearing about so many different companies and, and as you said, government agencies, uh, municipalities, transforming their business models, transforming their approaches. What, what are some of your favorite transformation stories? Oh, I mean, my favorite one that we're doing is Travis Perkins. Okay. You know, John Carter, I think you guys maybe even interviewed him last year when he yep. was here, CEO, um, 
old state distribution business and taking a whole new fresh approach. Undoing 40 to 50 different applications, taking his entire business, putting it online. He deals with contracts. So they're the Home Depot of the UK market. Mm -hmm. And right now, if you drive up into that carport and you want to order something, it's manual. Sticky notes, phones, dumb terminals. I need five windows, I need five roofs, I need five you know, pieces of wood. Everything's just a scurry. He wants to put it on when you drive up next year. You're on an iPad, what would you like? Oh, by the way, you want to make a custom order on that window frame? You want to make green, yellow, red? You want to order different tiles of Size. roof styling? Custom orders is the future. You as a, as a contractor walking into that organization want to make a custom order. That today is very complicated for a company like that to handle. So the future is about undoing all that, embracing the custom order process, giving you a really unique, you know, touchless, uh, uh, buying process where it's all on an iPad, it's all automated. You know what? I'm telling you, here's your five new windows, here's the new frame you want on, and by the way, you're going to get it in five days and three hours and 21 minutes delivered to your door, right? And by the way, these guys are huge, right? They're the, uh, one of the biggest distribution companies in all of the United Kingdom, and so that's one of my favorite stories. Can we go over some of the metrics that you've been sharing? I know it's some, somewhat repetitive, but I'd like to get it on record. There's 55%, 84, 88, over 1100, 3X, 60%. Maybe we start with the 60%. I think it's bookings growth, That's right? right, yeah. License sales growth last year alone. And you know, I looked at, you know, my CFO always keeps me honest, but I think I can say it anyways, <laughs> which is, I looked at everybody else. I mean, you look at the, I will not even mention any competitors' names, but you look at the top five competitors that we have. We grew faster than they did last year on sales of Cloud Suite. Okay, so that's 60% so that, bookings growth on cloud. Correct, correct. Okay. that's right, yeah. I mean, when you think of our competitors, I saw 40s, I saw some 30s, I saw maybe 52 at the next one down. So, people don't think of us that way. So we were, at the enterprise scale, the fastest growing cloud company in the world. Okay, and then 3X, that's 3X the number of customers who bought multiple products, is correct. that correct? Correct, that's exactly right. So think about that transformation. They used to buy from us one product, Feature function rich, great, but now they're buying five products, eight products from us, so 3X increase year over year already happening. Okay, and then it was 1,100 plus. Is go, go Lives. Go Lives? Yeah. So that's, so that's People cloud, always ask lives. us, you're selling stuff, are they using it, is it working, right? Yeah. So you got to you know, follow up with delivery, so we're spending a ton of money on certification, training, enablement. Look at the SI community. Look at the Deloitte, Accenture, Capgemini, Grant Thornton. Four of the major SIs in the world that weren't here last year, they're all, all here now. here this year. Mm -hmm. Platinum sponsors. So mm -hmm. delivery on Go Lives, the SI community is embracing us, helping us. I mean, I can't do $100 million transformations on my own with these customers. I need Accenture, I need Deloitte. Look at Coke. Coke's going to be a massive transformation for financials, human capital management. And so I got Accenture and Deloitte helping us taking a hundred plus billion dollar company on those two systems. And then 84, 88 is the number of? Live customers, uh, sorry, uh, total cloud. customers that we have in the cloud. Cloud customers, Correct. okay, not total yeah. customers. Yeah, no, no, okay. 90, we have 90,000 yeah. plus yeah. customers, yeah. and then 84, 8,500 of them are cloud-based so customers. You got a ways, ways to go to convert some of to those convert. guys. Well, that's so our that's opportunity. Good. That's absolutely. That's exactly right. And 55% of revenue came from the cloud, obviously driven by the cloud booking growth. That's right, exactly. So I mean, just the acceleration, I mean, as I said, when we started this thing in New Orleans, two, three percent, now tipping point, revenue. I mean, it's one thing to sell software, but to actually turn it into revenue, Nobody at enterprise scale has done the 2%, the 55% at our size. Lots of companies in the $100 million range, small companies, but you know, if we were a standalone cloud company, we'd be one of the largest cloud companies in the world. So the narrative from Oracle, I wonder if you could comment on this, is that the core of enterprise apps has not moved to the cloud, and we, are, we Oracle, are the guys to move it there because we are the only ones with that end-to-end -end cloud, on-prem to cloud strategy, and, and, uh, uh, and, and most companies can't put core apps enterprise apps in the cloud, especially on Amazon. So what do you say to that? Well, it's because they don't have the applications to do that. You know, Oracle, do you does not, Oracle doesn't have the application horsepower. They don't have industry-based application suites. If you think of what Fusion is, it's a, it's a mishmash of all the applications that they bought. There's no industry capability. That, so that's it's horizontal the, is what It's horizontal. You, know, and you, you can't, I mean, Oracle is fighting the battle against Amazon. I mean, they declared war against AWS. I'm glad they're doing that, go ahead. I mean, I don't know how you're going to do that, but that, that they want to fight the infrastructure game. For us, infrastructure is commoditized. We're fighting the business applications layer game. And so, when you look at SAP or Oracle or anybody else, they've never done what we've done in our heritage, which is take key critical mission functionality for aerospace and defense, or automotive. We have the last mile functionality. I mean, I have companies like Ferrari, one of the most complicated companies, we've talked about those guys for years. Yeah. No modifications, BAE. 
over in, in the UK building the F-35 fighter jets and the Typhoon warplanes. It doesn't get any more complicated than building an F-35 fighter jet. No modifications in their software that they have with us. You can only build cloud-based solutions if you don't modify the software. Oracle doesn't have that, never had it. You know, they're not a manufacturing pedigreed organization. SAP's probably more analogous to that. But even for SAP, they only have one complete big product set covering retail, distribution, finance. It's the same piece of software they send to a bank that they send to a retail that they send to a manufacturer. We don't do that, right? That's been our core forever. So your dogma company. is no custom mods because you're basically saying you can't succeed in the cloud with custom mods. Yeah. I mean, we have an extensibility platform yeah. to do some you know, neat things if you need to do that, but generally speaking, you know, otherwise it's just lipstick on the pig if you're running modified applications. That's called hosting, right? That's what these guys are you know, largely well, doing. A lot of people count hosting as cloud. They, That's they all the game it. they're playing. They throw, right? they throw everything in the, in the cloud kitchen sink. That's right. Okay. And as we talked with you before, we spent billions at the, we all our R and D's at the application layer. We do some work in the you know, integration layer and so on, but most of our money is spent in the last mile, which Oracle and SAP, they don't want to waste it. They don't, they don't, they're all focused on HANA and infrastructure and, and system speed and performance and all the stuff that we view as absolutely being commoditized. But that's exactly. really attractive yeah. to the SIs, the fact that they don't go that last mile. So well, why is it that the SIs are suddenly sort of coming to Infor? Well, you know what, because they finally see there is a lot of revenue still on the line in terms of change management, business process re-engineering. Re you take a company like Travis Perkins, change their entire model of doing business, there isn't just modification revenue or integration revenue, there is huge dollars to be had on change management, taking the company, the CEO, John Carter, by the hand, and saying, here's how you're going to transform your entire business process. That more than makes up, in many cases, high value dollars than focused on changing a widget from green to yellow. And it's well, right in the wheelhouse of these big consultancies. And they're, making, and they're making good money on digital transformation. So what are the digital yeah. use cases? So that's where they're, you know, look at Accenture, they did a great job. I think 20 plus percent of their business now is all coming from digital. Mm -hmm. That didn't exist three, four years ago. Well, and you have, you have a lot of historical experience from your Oracle days of working right. with those large SIs. They were critical, but they were doing different type of work then. And is it your, your premise that a lot of that's going away and it's shifting toward? Well, hey, listen, the voice of the customer mm -hmm. is everything. And it, it, may, it may take time. You can, you can snow a customer once. Right? which we've already done in this industry of software. You know, we told them, buy generic-based software, Oracle or SAP, modify it with an SI, take five years, implement it for $100 million, get stuck on this platform, and then if you're lucky, maybe upgrade in 10 years. Whoever does that today as a playbook, as a customer, and if an SI can sell that, I'm not buying that. You think any customers I know today yeah. are buying that vision? I don't think so. Right, they were the outsourcing yeah. business. Yeah. 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 That's right. Another thing that's come out of this conference is, is attention to the, the Brooklyn Nets deal. Ah, Can you talk a little bit about it? It's very cool. I love those guys. You know? <laughs> We're from Boston, we love the Brooklyn yeah, Nets too. Yeah, we do. And you, and you, and you yeah. know I love... They can play us anytime, every right. day, every Thank day. Thank you. Yeah. you know, um, For those uh, draft picks. Brett and those guys, you know what it is, it, it, and, and Sean, the GM, the, uh, the energy, you know what it is, I, 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 I use that a lot with my own guys, Brooklyn grit. Mm. <laughs> and they're willing to look and upturn every aspect of the game to, to be more competitive. And so we're in there with our technology looking at every facet. What are they eating? What's the EQ stuff, emotional quotient? How's that team collaboration coming together? And then mapping it to they have the best 3D cameras you know, on the court. So foot positioning and how are they aligning to each other? Who's doing the front guard in terms of of holding the next person back so they can have enough room to do a three-point shot. Where should the three-point shot come from? So taking all the EQ stuff, the IQ stuff, the performance, the teamwork, putting it all into a recipe for success. I mean, these guys are, you know, I'm going to predict it here, these guys are going to, you know, they're going to rock it. Um, next couple of years uh, as a team, so. But it's, it's not just what goes on in the court, too. It's also about fan engagement, too. All what that. Well, doing. fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I get all excited about, you know, just making them a much better team. Yeah. But the whole fan experience, mm -hmm. walking into a place, you know, knowing that if I get up now, the washroom line isn't 15 miles long, and that the cash line for a beer isn't going to take me 20 minutes, that on my app, you actually have all the you know, information and, and sensors in place to know that, hey, right now is a great time, you know, aisle number four, uh, queue number three is a one minute wait for a beer, go. Or have runners, you yeah, know, right. everything's on your phone. You know, they don't do enough service. So there's, there's a huge revenue opportunity along with it for, from a business point of view. But I would also say, 
is a customer service element. How many times have we sat in a game and go, I'm not getting up there. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm not going to do it. Unless you're sitting in the VIP area. Well, there's revenue to so be had all over the place. Yeah, they're, they're missing out on our beer it's, money. It's ways yeah. for stadium services, which are essentially a liquor distribution system. Right? Exactly <laughs> right. But to do that, you got to connect point of sale systems, you got to connect a lot of components, sensors in the bathroom. I mean, you got to do a lot of work. So we're going to create you know, the fan experience of the future with them and, and preferences. The fact that they know that when you walk in past the door with your app, and if you have the Brooklyn Nets app, that we know who your favorite player is, and you get a little text that says, hey, you know what? 10% discount on the next shirt from your favorite player, right? Things like that. Making a personal connection with you about what you like uh, is going to change the game. And that's, ha that's happening everywhere. In retail, everybody wants to have a one-to-one -one relationship. You want to order your Nike shoes online with a green lace and a red lace on the right, Nike allows you to do that, right? You want to order a, a shirt that they'll make for you and the different emblems on it and different you know, kind of technology to it, those are things they're doing too, right? Well, so very one-to-one -one relationship. Well, it's, it's data, and it's more than data, it's insights. And you guys are, everybody's a data company, but you're really becoming a data and an, in, an insight-oriented yeah. company. Yeah, 100%. Did you kind of stumble into that, or is this part of the, the grand plan six years ago, or how'd you yeah, get listen, here? Listen, this, this whole, I mean, to do cloud-based solutions by industry is not just to solve for applications going from infrastructure on-premise to off-premise. What does it allow you to do? Well, if you're an AWS, I can run 10,000 core pro I can I can run a report in 10 minutes with AWS that would take you a week around sales information, customer information. You know, look at all the Netflix content. You, you, you log in on Netflix, suggestions for you. It's actually pretty accurate, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Scarily I mean, accurate right? sometimes, yeah, it's yes. Really good. It's pretty smart yeah. what goes into the, the algorithm that looks at your past. Unfortunately, I log into my kids section and it has, <laughs> it has my name on it and I get all these wonderful recommendations for kids. But, but that's the kind of stuff that we're talking about. Customers need that. It's about real time. It's not looking backwards anymore. It's about real time decisioning and analytics and artificial intelligence, AI, is, is the future, um, for sure. So, so, so more, more on the future. I mean, this is really fun listening to you yeah. talk because you are yeah. the president and you have a great, uh, great view of, of what's going on. Yeah. What will we be talking about next year at this time? Well, it won't be quite this time, it'll be September, but what, what, right. do, you, what do you think? I, I think what you're going to see is massive global organizations up on stage, like the ones I mentioned, Travis Perkins, a Safeway, you know, a Gold Coast, um, a Hertz. You know, Hertz is under attack as a company, yeah. you know, a, a, a business that, what, the, the entry point into the rental car business was very, very hard. Who's going to go buy 800,000 cars and get mm -hmm. in the rental business, open 10,000 centers? You don't need to do that anymore today. Software. It's called software, <laughs> application <laughs> business. So right. there are business models under attack. We're feverishly working with their CEO and their executive team and their board on redefining the future of Hertz. So you're going to see here next year the conversation with a company like Hertz rebounding and growing and being successful, and you know what's what's you know the best defense is a good offense, right? So they're on the offensive. They're going to use their size, their scale. You look at the retailers. I mean, I love the towel story. I mean, they make one out of every six shirts. Amazon puts the same shirt online that they sell for $39.99. Towels trying to sell for $89.99. They're saying enough of that. They built these beautiful. Um, um, Analyzers, sensors, you know, uh, where you walk into this little room and it man, you know, they, they do a sensor of a hundred different parts of your body. So they're going to give the perfect shirt for you. So it's an experience center. So you walk into this little, you know, center, name's escaping me now, but they're going to take all the measure, like, like a professional Italian tailor, tailor would yes. do. You walk in, it's all automatic. You come out of there, they know all the components of your body, which is a good thing and a bad thing sometimes, right? <laughs> but they'll know it all. And then you go in this beautiful rack and you're going to pick what color do you want? Do you want a different color? So everything is moving to custom, and you'll pay more for that. Wouldn't you pay more for a customized shirt that fits your body perfectly, rather than an off the rack kind of shirt at A999? That's how you compete with you know, the generic based e-commerce plays that are mm -hmm. out there. That use case of towel is going to happen in every facet. DSW, you heard this DSW this morning, these experience centers, the shoeless aisles, you know, that whole experience, but you know, you walking in as a, with, I mean, they're the most loyal women shoppers are DSW with your application, <laughs> yes, right? Yes, yes. And how many times have you tried a shoe on that doesn't fit properly, or it's not the mm -hmm. one you want, or mm -hmm. they don't have your size, or you want to make some Come configurations on. to it? Yeah. Ashley, <laughs> got one too. Ashley came by and gave me this. There you go. I love DSW. I mean, what, I mean, look at, I mean, they're what? One of the biggest shoe companies in the world, not standing still, and Ashley is yeah. transforming. I mean, they went live on financials in like 90 days in the cloud, right. which for them, 
that kind of innovation happening that fast is unbelievable. So next year, the whole customer experience side is going to be revolutionary for these kinds of exciting organizations. So they're, rather than cowering from this whole digital transformation, they're embracing it. We're going to be the engine of digital mm -hmm. transformation for them. So I, I get so excited to have major corporations completely disrupting themselves to, cha you know, to change their market for themselves moving forward. What is the Coke investment oh, man. meant to you guys? Can you talk about that a little bit? I mean, obviously, you know, we hear $2 billion and blah, 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 but can you oh, go a little deeper that. for us? I mean, the, forget all the money stuff for a minute. Just the, the, the fact that we're part of a company that is, went from 40 million when Charles Koch started taking over from his family and went to 100 plus billion. Think about that innovation. Think about the horsepower, the culture, the aggressiveness, the tenacity, the will to win. That's all, you know, we already had that. To combine that with their sheer size and scale is something that is exciting for me, one. Two is, they view technology as the next big chapter for them. I mean, again, not resting on your laurels. I'm already 100 billion. You know, they want to grow to 150, 200 billion, and they see technology as the route to getting there. Automating their plants, connecting all their components of their employees, getting the right employees to the right place. So workforce management, all the HR stuff that we're doing on transformation. The financials, getting a global consolidated view across a $100 billion business on our systems. That's transformation. That's big, big business for us. And what a great reference to have. A guy like Steve Fellmeyer up yesterday. He'll be up here next year talking about how he's using us to transform their business. And there's not many $100 billion companies around, right? So what a great reference point for us to have them as a customer and as a proof point of success. Well, we'll look forward to that in September and seeing he, you, you back here next year too. Look forward to it. Stefan, thanks so much for thanks. joining us. Appreciate it, nice thank you. Me. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. That is it for us and theCUBE at Inforum 2017. See you next time.